Good day folks, uh, Jim here from Orchard Forex. It's Saturday the 3rd of July and uh, the markets have just finished with a fairly uh, solid uh, non-farm payrolls uh, result. Uh, that saw the dollar spike a little bit higher actually early in the piece, uh, made a new three month high but then eased back. Uh, while the stocks powered on, uh, the S&P and the Nasdaq both made uh, new all time highs to finish a fairly solid second quarter for the states. Uh, there were a couple of weak spots in the numbers uh, the headline unemployment rate uh, rose to 5.9 against an expected 5.7% uh, and last month's 5.8%, uh, although uh, April's numbers were upwardly revised from about 550, I think it was, to 583,000. So overall, a pretty solid number, and traders will now turn their focus towards uh, next week's uh, FOMC minutes and uh, see what the Fed have got to say. Uh, about their thoughts on inflation. So uh, uh, it'll all be on hold, I think, really till Wednesday. Uh, it's July the 4th, so I, I think Monday's going to be fairly quiet, Tuesday probably as well. Uh, although we do get the RBA decision on Tuesday, and uh, uh, I don't think there won't be any change in policy, but it'll be interesting to see uh, what the RBA board have to say about the domestic economy. Uh, but it, it will be uh, all about the FOMC minutes on Wednesday, really. Uh, apart from that, there isn't an awful lot out. Uh, Monday sees uh, there's Australian retail sales, uh, and there's some EU retail sales out midweek as well. Uh, but really, that aside, uh, the only other event uh, worth uh, noting really is uh, we'll be seeing uh, Chinese June inflation figures, which are due on Friday. So, without further ado, we'll uh, go and have a look at the uh, charts, start see what they've got to say, uh, starting with the uh, dollar index as normal. Okay, folks, so here we have a daily chart of the US dollar index. Uh, and as you may remember, I was slightly uh, bullish on the US dollar last week. And it actually did have three or four uh, mild up days in a row. But it uh, it came off a little bit after the non-palm perils on Friday. It did Before it did that, though, it did make a new three-month high. Uh, the index got up to 92 and three quarters, but uh, settled back at 92 and a quarter. And uh, really, uh, some further consolidation really wouldn't surprise me early in the week. The daily indicators, uh, the MACDs, do look as though they may be topping out a little bit. But overall, I retain my uh, bullish bias. Um, we're going to have a look at the weekly charts in a second. So what I'm really looking at is this uh, neckline for this head and shoulders. And generally for the US dollar, I'm expecting more near-term strength uh, in the coming weeks. So uh, it may be uh, if uh, the FOMC minutes are hawkish and uh, I don't think they necessarily are going to be that hawkish but uh, they've spelled it out fairly clearly what uh, they expect to be happening in the months ahead but uh, I can see that the US dollar could strengthen a little bit take out the neckline here it's from 92.85 head up towards these highs here which is from 93.45 um, but the objective of the uh, head and shoulders will be a fair bit higher than that and we'd be looking somewhere up around 96 but that's uh, too far away at this stage uh, to consider. But overall, I, I do kind of like the dollar. Uh, I think the euro is going to remain under pressure for a little while. Uh, dollar yen seems to be looking uh, more and more interesting. Uh, and uh, elsewhere, everything's a little bit choppy, but uh, I kind of like uh, to buy dips in the Aussie. But we'll go and have a look at that in a second. Uh, before then, we'll go and have a, a quick look at the weekly charts. So here on the weeklies, you can see quite clearly the uh, the neckline, and we're we're struggling with the 23.6% FIBO level at the moment. But uh, once we overcome that and the the neckline itself, then I think we can head up towards this. Uh, the first port of call would be the 38.2. Well, that, once we've broken above this high here, 93.40 odd, uh, that we, then we can sort of head back towards this uh, 94 and a half level. Uh, and above there, we've got the 100 and the 200 week moving averages. Uh, they're too far off to consider at, the, at this point in time. But the um, momentum indicators do look uh, constructive. So as far as uh, the dollar goes, I'm still looking to be buying dips selling uh, rallies in the euro probably selling rallies in the aussie although i don't think that's going to go down too far but uh, it, it uh, looks as though it could stand a bit of pressure but anyway without further ado uh, we'll go and have a look and see what the uh, the charts have to say for the individual currency pairs so here we have a one hour chart of the euro and as you can see uh, right on the numbers we had this uh, spike down that was a new three month high for the dollar a low for the euro uh, we need to go out to the uh, four-hour charts and we can go back right back to here where, where was the last time it was down here 
uh, early April by the looks of it. So uh, for the time being though, uh, going just quickly back to the hourly charts, the, uh, the, the hourlies are looking a little bit positive for early trade on Monday. So a, a test of a slightly higher levels would not surprise. Um, but uh, with this sort of 118, 80, 119 level uh, where the 200 hour moving average lies, uh, I think that will probably be resistance on Monday. But having said that, the four hour charts, are, we are seeing some um, bullish divergence. So uh, I, I think for the day, I would be buying uh, dips, just uh, with a, basically buying dips with a stop loss right below this one, well, put it below 118. Uh, I think you can probably trade that range. Say so buy, buy it down at sort of 118, 30, 40 if we see it. Set, sell it above, uh, well, if we get to 119, I'd probably be selling it there and using that as a range. Uh, further out though, the dailies still look heavy. And uh, the, as far as the euro is concerned, we have the neckline of that head and shoulders here. That comes in at uh, sort of 117 and a half or so. And I wouldn't be surprised over the, over the course of the week to see a test of that. Whether we break through there or not remains to be seen. Uh, but if we do, uh, in line with the dollar index, 38.2% uh, retracement, as far as the euro is concerned, that comes in just below 117, which ties in with this low here. Uh, and if we broke through there, then I guess we, we start to commence a, a steeper decline at, back down towards uh, 116, possibly lower. Uh, that's, a, that's a way off at this stage. Just looking ahead at the weeklies, uh, we're not really doing showing us an awful lot. Possibly slightly heavy, but not, not really showing any great momentum. So uh, and don't forget, it is uh, it is July now, and uh, the Northern Hemisphere generally are on holiday and uninterested. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me just to see us consolidate near current levels, but with a, a overall a slightly he heavy bias. Uh, if we saw the euro going back to the four-hour charts here, if we saw the euro back above this or one nineteen seventy level at any stage now. Uh, then I think I'm probably wrong uh, and we're probably heading back to 120 plus. But right at this stage, uh, I'm not expecting that to happen. And overall, I'm really looking to sell rallies into the sort of 119 plus area, looking for that move towards the neckline, which I think is this line down here uh, at uh, sort of 117.60 by the looks of it. Uh, 117, uh, yeah, 11760. So that's about it for the euro. Uh, moving forward to dollar yen. Okay, so here we have an hourly chart of dollar yen. Uh, reached a high of one eleven sixty five. Uh, a long, that's a fairly long term high, but it gave up the ground at the end of the day. Uh, closed lower, but it's sitting above the uh, one hundred and the two hundred hour moving averages uh, at around just below uh, one eleven. Um, the hour, the indicators, the hourly indicators are looking heavy. The four hour indicators, if we move forward there, they will also turn sharply lower. So a bit of a test of the downside would not really surprise me. Uh, for the uh, early in the week at least uh, and if we if we if we do head lower there's going to be support down around here this will 11035 uh, actually we're going to have a look at the dailies the rising trend support that we see here comes in yeah it's about that about that 11035 level um, where I'd be, probably be looking to buy it again while the risk on mood is uh, seeing stocks grind uh, ever ever slightly higher uh, I think the dollar will remain generally underpinned, but we are going to see these slight setbacks. If, if at any time we see stocks uh, take a dive, uh, then dollar yen will uh, fall quite sharply. But uh, at this point in time, it doesn't really look as though that's uh, likely to happen. So I'm, I'm still a buyer of dips on the dollar. Now, we, we got this 111.65, which we now have a double top with this, uh, what's that, March 2020 high. Uh, if we take that out, uh, we're looking at this level up here. Which is 112.20 and so 112.35. This this particular high back here, which is April 2019. Uh, beyond there, then we can we can progress uh, quite significantly towards 114. But that's a, a way off at this stage. The only thing that worries me uh, with dollar yen is we have got this bearish divergence. I don't think it's anything to worry about at this point in time. But I would certainly have a stop loss. Place below that sort of 110, 30, 35 level. If we go below there, then we're probably heading back to the first FIBO level currently at 109 and a half, and possibly towards the 100 day moving average, which is just below 109. Uh, that doesn't look likely at this stage, so as I say, buy dips, uh, but with a tight stop loss in place, but looking for a, a, a grind higher towards this uh, 112, 20 area. Uh, sterling, I won't spend too long on sterling because I'm not really sure what's going on there. There's so many politics and uh, COVID, conflicting COVID stories coming out. The uh, health minister resigning in the UK. So no, none of that's uh, 
uh, it makes it any easier to trade. But sterling, uh, like the other currencies, uh, it's made a bit of ground against the dollar on Friday, uh, having made a new uh, longer term low. Let's go and have a look at that. Uh, as with the euro, uh, it reached a level last seen in what uh, early April. So and then it, and then it uh, saw this rebound. Uh, we've got some bullish divergence here. So it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, sterling head a little bit higher uh, on Monday, Tuesday, but I don't really think it's uh, uh, going to go too far. The daily charts look heavy to me as well. So uh, I think overall, I prefer to be short than long, although I'm a little bit cautious. Uh, I, it, it's uh, too choppy for me, sterling. I don't really want to be involved at the moment. Uh, but if uh, if we are looking to sell rallies, I guess uh, this will 138.5 to 138.70 area is going to be a resistance on Monday. If we go up through there, then I, I guess we can go back to 139, maybe 139 and a quarter. Uh, on the downside, this is obviously going to be uh, quite strong support and I don't think we're going to go below there. So on the day on Monday, I'd probably be looking to say buy dips, so, so 130 or 137 and three quarters if we sit down there with a stop loss below the low here, 137.30 or so. Further out though, I suspect we might be, if we if and when we take out this low, we probably head back towards this uh, level here. So 136 figure 20 area where I'll probably be looking to lighten up on any any shorts. But as I say, the, the dailies do look heavy and likewise, the, the weeklies look a little bit uh, heavy. So uh, although I think we might see a bit of uh, sterling strength on Monday, Tuesday, I'm probably using that to to sell into, uh, looking to uh, head lower over the longer longer period. Uh, the Aussie, uh, having recovered from this little 74 and a half level that it got down to uh, on the Thursday, Friday morning, it actually recovered quite nicely uh, after non-farm payrolls. Uh, the hourlies are pointing high. It finished pretty much uh, on its highs of the day uh, at 75 and a quarter. Uh, it's got some resistance ahead of it right here, 200 hours of so 75.40. FIBO at 75.50, so that's going to be uh, resistance on Monday. But uh, the hourlies are pointing higher and the four hourlies equally uh, are looking positive. And, and we've got this bearish divergence which could uh, could see us power on to uh, to higher levels. Overall though, uh, as with everything else, I think we probably need to be using uh, rallies in the Aussie to sell into. I'm not that bearish on the Aussie, but uh, it's not going to outperform just on its own. Looking at the daily charts, they're not telling us an awful lot, but the weeklies do look a little bit heavy. So out of choice, I, as I say, I'd be using near term uh, Aussie strength to sell into because I think over a period of time, we're probably going to head back down below that 74 and a half eventually. That, that level uh, on the bigger picture, it was 23.6%. Uh, Let me go back to the dailies. Okay, so here we are back on a daily chart. And as you can see, I've expanded the uh, FIBOs. Uh, now the uh, this FIBO level here comes in at about 74.20 and that's going to be pretty big support. Uh, we're currently 100 points plus above that at the moment so uh, I'm not really expecting an imminent test. Uh, the RBA decision of course may uh, change all that. If we do go below here uh, then uh, I did notice one bank last week saying we can go down to sort of 72 and a half level down to around here so uh, I, I guess we need to bear that in mind. Uh, as I say I'm not really that bearish on the Aussie uh, the dailies possibly look a little bit heavy uh, and I guess if the US dollar does strengthen the Aussie's not it, it's not going to be able to outperform on its own and as I say the, the weeklies do look uh, a little bit heavy as well longer term though I, I do kind of like the idea of buying the Aussie on dips because I think eventually uh, if we're going to see the economic growth that uh, we're all being told about uh, and the size of it uh, there's going to be good demand for Australian commodities uh, and that should underpin the uh, currency so uh, that remains to be seen um, but uh, we'll uh, we'll have to see how that pans out um, I'm not going to go into the Kiwi today it's uh, the Kiwi's a bit the same as the Aussie it's uh, knocking around either side of 70 cents let's just go and have a quick look at the chart I guess uh, it's uh, it's it's trading either side of 70 cents the dailies are not really telling us an awful lot we are below the 200 uh, day moving average right here uh, that's at uh, sort of 70 45 50 uh, I guess we need to break above that uh, in order to make uh, uh, headway towards that previous high around 70.90. Uh, on the downside, good support looks like it's coming in just above 69.15 uh, and a break below there. If we do see a break below 69 cents, then I guess we there doesn't seem to be an awful lot to stop it going uh, a bit lower, but that's uh, some way off at this stage. 
Uh, let's go and have a look at uh, the stock markets quickly. So here we have a four hour chart of the S&P 500 and that's just grinding ever slowly higher and the, it has to be said the uh, four hour charts look fairly positive uh, for it at the start of the week. Uh, the dailies pretty much likewise. They seem to be picking up steam. Uh, we have got some bearish divergence uh, in the RSI so that needs to be noted. But for the time being, I don't think you go against it. You've uh, just got to, to play along with the trend. Uh, the support now comes in on this trend line level. It's sort of just under uh, around 4,200, I guess. So uh, at the top side, well, I guess we're, we're now we're aiming at sort of 4,300. Uh, to me, it seems to me is that we're going to continue this slow grind high. But if we ever do get a down day, it'll probably be a two or three percenter. Uh, at, at which point in time, depending on the headlines, of course, but uh, you probably buy the dips uh, uh, with a stop loss place below this trend line. Uh, that below there would take us back to the the hundred day moving average pretty quickly, I would imagine. Uh, the the weekly charts they are looking somewhat toppish, so just be a little bit careful. And as I've said before, we have got this uh, bearish divergence uh, on the weekly charts as well. So. Some kind of accident would not really surprise me. I would definitely be keeping a trailing stop, probably 100 points below whatever the current level happens to be, I think, in the S&P, uh, because I, I think you, you can see those kind of moves these days. And um, I think you, you do definitely need to protect the downside, uh, although I, I think and uh, suspect we are probably going to continue to head higher. Uh, just looking at the Dow, the Dow's yet to break to all-time highs. That's uh, tracking sideways, really. But uh, I think over time it probably will. Uh, the Nasdaq uh, is liking all the uh, economic numbers at the moment, and uh, it's uh, that, that once again the daily charts look pretty positive for the Nasdaq. We're at 14, 14,700, probably heading in on, on towards fifteen thousand. I guess the weeklies, once again, as I said last week, they've got me a bit confused because we've got some quite dramatic uh, divergence uh, in the charts. Uh, but uh, the, the Nasdaq continues to power higher. Uh, the Aussie market, just quickly, uh, the Aussie market's uh, struggling along really at the moment. Uh, COVID lockdowns and all sorts of things there. Let's go and have a look at the four-hour charts. So it's just tracking sideways, but uh, it's pretty much stuck at 7,300. I think eventually it is going to break hard, but it, uh, gosh, it's going to be a long, slow process by the looks of it. Uh, in the longer term, I'm really quite bullish on commodity prices. So I think uh, that should help the Aussie market, but we're yet to really uh, see it make its move and... Uh, it's buy your time at the moment. I, I'd still prefer to buy dips. I guess, you know, you keep a stop loss below this uh, 70, 7,200 here. That's 100 points away. But uh, eventually, I think we, given that the US markets look to be headed higher, uh, I think that'll slowly drag the Aussie up with it, uh, albeit somewhat reluctantly, perhaps. Uh, but we need to get above here. And then there's 7,400 all time high. Uh, we Once we get above there, maybe it's a different uh, story. But until then, I think we're probably tracking a little bit sideways, but to my preference is to always be buying the dips rather than looking for rallies to sell into. Uh, right, from there we go, let's go and have a look at gold. And gold's a bit of a mess right now. Uh, we, we're we stuck below this uh, 1800 level. And as I said last week, if we break above 1800, then I think I'd be looking to, to buy it to go long. Uh, we're, we're $15 away or so from that at this point in time. But the uh, the four hour charts are pointing a little bit higher for, for Monday. Uh, on the downside, we briefly broke that 1760 support that I was talking about last week, got down to 1750, but uh, there were plenty of buyers down there. And uh, I, right now, I think we're probably fairly much range bound. The dailies actually are looking slightly more positive than they were last week. Uh, we are sitting on the 100 day moving average now, uh, which has come down to 1787 here. Uh, if we do break it, then the. Uh, 200 day moving average has uh, drifted a little lower to 1828 so that that would be the next port of call maybe we go back up there uh, and then consolidate more I'm not really sure if we if we do see a stronger dollar which uh, in the near term I am expecting as I've explained then uh, I think the pressure could remain on the downside for gold longer term though uh, as with most of other commodities I'm actually uh, really quite bullish uh, heading in towards the end of the year and uh, into 2022. I think uh, we're going to see a huge commodity demand. Uh, so that, that should underpin gold uh, and the Aussie, as I said earlier. So um, although I'm a little bit bearish at the moment, uh, I'd probably be looking to buy dips uh, 
down, you know, if we saw it down towards this level here, this 1670 level, I'd uh, certainly be looking to buy dips. Uh, before then, we've got the uh, this 38.2% uh, retrace level that was around 17 and a quarter. Um, I, I'm, I haven't really got a hard and fast view on it at the moment. Probably just still trade the range 1800 to 1750 uh, and go with a break of either side, I suspect. Finally, oil. Uh, oil finished the week at $75 uh, a barrel. Uh, it's almost reached our target here, the 7660 level, seen back in uh, September 2018. So uh, I'm not sure uh, what I think. It, it, it looks quite positive. Don't forget there's an OPEC plus meeting going on over the weekend. Uh, so we might see some gapping in oil on Monday. Uh, but overall, uh, the, the weeklies look vaguely positive. The dailies not telling us an awful lot. They're not overbought, but uh, we, a bit like stock market, really. We've got this slow grind higher. And uh, it looks to me as though it's probably just going to continue. Uh, it, what, as I said before, that 7660, uh, sorry, 7660 level, if, the, if, if that's taken out, then there's not an awful lot to set, stop us going back to this sort of 83 and a half level. Uh, $80 a barrel obviously will be uh, important. But longer term, I think, I suspect we're probably uh, heading into next year. I wouldn't be surprised to see us back up at $100 plus a barrel. So uh, we had to wait and see on that one. But in the meantime, I think I'd probably range trade it. If we look at the four hour charts, just to update this uh, Fibo. Um, we reached a high last week, 76.10. Uh, right now, I'd be looking to buy it at around sort of 72 and a half, 73, I think. Stop loss below here, 71.70. Um, but really trading it from the uh, the long side, although it's going to be, as, I think it's going to be a slow move. So you've got to have patience for it. So anyway, we'll wait and see on that one. Finally, I'm just going to have a quick look at the calendar. There's, as I say, there's not much on it. So it's Independence Day in the States on Sunday. Uh, a lot of people probably take the Monday off, so it could be fairly quiet. We've got the uh, services, uh, PMIs, and the uh, composite PMIs to deal with. Uh, that aside, there isn't an awful lot out. There's uh, the Australian Building Permits and Retail Sales Monday. Uh, there's the Centex out uh, later in the day. I don't think that will move uh, the markets too far. Tuesday, the main event will be the RBA and the uh, RBA governor's speech. Uh, we've got the EU retail sales and the ISM services PMIs uh, for the states uh, on Tuesday afternoon. Wednesday, not an awful lot. ANZ job ads, that might affect the Aussie a little bit. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we've got the growth forecast for the EU. Um, the FOMC minutes will be the uh, main event of the week, and we have to wait and see what the Fed have to say there. Uh, that aside, uh, we've got another speech from the RBA governor on uh, Thursday. Jobless claims, uh, really not an awful lot. As I, as I said earlier, the main, the other main uh, event of the week will be the uh, June CPI numbers coming out of China. And then we've got some manufacturing data coming out of the UK, but that's really about it. Uh, not an awful lot on Friday. So it'll be a fairly quiet end to the week, I think. All right, so that's about it. A bit, uh, probably gone a little bit too long, but I uh, hope that was useful to you guys, and uh, we'll speak to you next week. Cheers.